Hi, I'm Susan Kellner of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program and I'm going to go through some of the highlights um, for the Grower Pesticide Safety Course and it will take us about 15 to 20 minutes. Alright, well, let's uh, keep going here. We'll take a look at the course first. The uh, certification course, participate in a class, either that class is online or in person. Um, you can get a grade of 75% or greater on the test. Uh, we cover product information, human environmental health, pesticide safety practices, pesticide application. The Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual is the textbook for the course and visit our website to find the business in your area that distributes our manuals or contact us for a manual. So go online, we have our course offerings listed there and our resources are there. You may also follow along in your manual as we go through this presentation. I'd like to thank some of our sponsors, you see them listed there and under me here is Valent and uh, we thank you for your support. Certification then, Certification of Farmers in Canada. Certification of Farmers is required in seven provinces and is voluntarily Terry in the other three. The provincial governments regulate the effective and safe use of pesticide application across Canada through education and over 22,000 farmers are certified in Ontario. Certification for Ontario farmers, if you are a farmer and want to buy and use Class B or Class C pesticides, you must be a certified farmer and upon successful completion and uh, declaring that you are a farmer and are older than 16 years of age, um, we would issue a Grower Pesticide Safety Course certificate to you. Certificate number, expiry year and month is on the certificate and uh, this would need to be presented when you're going to purchase uh, an agricultural or restricted pesticide, a class B or class C pesticide at the local vendor. Okay, again, you must meet the definition of a farmer to be certified, be 16 years of age or older, and successfully, successfully complete the course. The certificate is valid for five years. Who is a farmer under Regulation 6309? Okay, this is in the preface of the manual. Um, you are a farmer if you own or operate or work on an agricultural operation. And so those are the items there that uh, constitute a farm operation according to the definition. If any questions about that, uh, phone uh, the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks and talk to a pesticides specialist. And the list of pesticide specialists, um, their contact information is in the appendix of the Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual. Chapter 1, an overview of Chapter 1, how pesticides are regulated. Well, pesticides are registered in Canada through the Pest Management Regulatory Agency, PMRA, Health Canada. You want to read that label every year. It may have changed. Each label has a registration number and is unique to that label. And product and uh, the labels are online. And we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about pesticide labels uh, coming up. But remember that last year's label may be different from this year's or next year's uh, label. So products are under reevaluation. Emergency use uses may be added. There may be updated information, and uh, a new crop could be added. Uh, a new rate. Uh, the rates could have changed. The buffer zone may have changed, environmental information, there may be precautions, extra protective clothing equipment may now be required, so please uh, read the label every year. Classification of pesticides, of which both the federal and provincial governments do, they put them into groups to specify rules for use. So you need to know the classification to direct your use of that product. Federally, under the PMRA, we have four classifications, restricted, commercial, domestic, and manufacturing. Commercial can also be labeled agricultural, industrial, or institutional. And the Ontario Ministry of Environment, Conservation, and Parks, they're the um, ministry that looks after the Pesticides Act and Regulation 6309. And so they also classify pesticides and their classification matches the federal classification. So if we look on the table on this slide, we have the K 
Canada classification and the Ontario classification. Manufacturing is Class A in Ontario. Restricted federally is Class B. Commercial, Class C. Domestic, Class D. And also Ontario has an additional Class E that regulates the sale and use of corn and soybean seed treated with imidacloprid, clothiphyanidin, or thiamethoxam, active ingredients in the neonicotinoid family. So each class has different requirements for sale and use, and farmers, I've got them highlighted here, must be certifi certified to buy and use the Class B and Class C pesticides. Where can you find the classification? You will find the federal classification on the label near the product name, and by knowing the federal classification, you will know the Ontario classification. So you can see it there, agricultural. Therefore, you know the Ontario classification. This would be a Class C product in Ontario. All right, let's go on to farmer assistance. We have a certified farmer, but perhaps he wants to have a helper uh, a farmer assistant help him mix, load, or apply Class B or C pesticides. And it has to be under his supervision, his or her supervision. And uh, still, the supervising certified farmer is responsible when an assistant uses that pesticide. They must be trained. They must either participate in a grower pesticide safety course or participate in the pesticide safety for farmer assistance course given by a qualified on-farm pesticide safety instructor. So you can uh, be an on-farm pesticide safety instructor for your farm and any assistant can be uh, trained by you following the requirements of that training course, the pesticide safety for farmer assistant course. And we have uh, resources for that and contact us and uh, we'll help you with that. Okay, the assistants get a card. They have some um, restriction of duties and uh, tasks that they cannot do. They can only mix, load, or apply. Integrated Pest Management, Chapter 2. Let's briefly talk about that. OMAFRA provides education on integrated pest management and improved sprayer application, and that would be a Sprayers 101 website for the sprayer application information. PMRA is a decision-making process that uses all necessary techniques to suppress pests effectively, economically, and in an environmentally sound manner. And uh, all the crop uh, specialists, pest specialists with the ministry uh, are there and able to help you. Ways to manage pests, we group these into five categories, five groups going through genetic, cultural, biological, physical, and then finally chemical ways to manage pests. And uh, you can re review those and uh, those categories in your manual. They all come together to make an integrated pest management plan. Information, again, the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs has Ontario Crop IPM available, an excellent website for information on uh, crops and IPM that's current for all those crops. There's also crop protection guides put out by OMAFRA and you can see some of them here. Uh, they are free online and if you want to uh, purchase a hard copy then uh, available through um, go through the OMAFRA website to find uh, about uh, going to Publications Ontario to get copies. Um, the fruit production guides, there are five crops now that have so five different um, publications, apples, berries, uh, grapes, tender fruit, and uh, the crop protection guide for tree nuts. So uh, other resources are out there and uh, go through the OMAFRA uh, resources for help. They have lots of blogs and uh, Twitter accounts and are online and you can sign up for any of their, uh, uh, any of their resources. Let's go on to the pesticide label, chapter three. And we use an example label in the book Matador and it's on the blue pages. And I do encourage you to do the practice quiz. Uh, it gets you familiar with how a label is laid out. 
uh, lots of information on a pesticide label and uh, it is a legal document. Uh, you must read and follow those directions on how to use the product safely, how to use the product legally, what to do when there is an accident. Okay, there is a website, Health Canada, they have their pesticide labels online. So if you go to your search engine that uh, put in the keywords pesticide labels, Health Canada, it should come up for you This and you can search any pot product label through that site. There's an app that you can download for your phone and, and uh, you can um, go and uh, save labels and have them available offline if you can take them right out to the field with you if you need them. So the, on the pesticide label then, directions for use, detailed directions for use. We're going through rates, crops, pests, crop rotation restrictions, number of applications, application equipment to use, nozzles to use, timing, appropriate weather conditions, the required protective clothing and equipment, uh, restricted entry intervals, pre-harvest intervals, spray drift buffer zones, vegetative filter strips, precautionary statements, steps to take in case of an emergency or an accident, and disposal information. So very detailed and complete information about how to use that product properly. We touch on the pre-harvest intervals, intervals quickly here. An example is Scala uh, SC fungicide. We can see a pre-harvest interval of 14 days for apple, crab apple, and meha. PHI of 72 days for pear. So it's varied by crop and you have to look at each label and each year that could have changed so you have to check it each year. Restricted entry interval is something you need to um, pay attention to. It's the period of time that agricultural workers or anyone else must not do hand labor in treated areas after a pesticide has been applied. So this gives the time for the pesticide residues to break down to safe levels so that you can go into the crop or your workers can grow into the crop and get work done. So you need to notify people of um, the restricted entry interval. No one goes in and you can do that with uh, a sign like this and we have these available at the Ontario Pesticide Education Program. If you want to give us a call we have them for sale and you can uh, post those at the ways into the treatment area. Pesticide application, okay, you've got it done, then the REI starts after the application ends. You've got the sign posted then. REI has ended, safe to re-enter, you can go and take the sign down. Examples. A pesticide matador has a restricted entry interval, 24 hours for all crops. Scala has 12 hours except for activities four. And then it will list that and it will be 24 hours for those activities, 24 hours under grapes for the tasks listed on the label. And here's another example, switch 62.5 um, WG. Again, 12 hours except for certain activities and uh, it's noting here for Saskatoon berries, it would be 10 days before going in for hand harvesting, pruning, or thinning. So note, if the REI is not stated on the label, use a 12-hour REI. Early entry, restricted entry interval. So here's an example, 24-hour restricted entry interval, um, and uh, how you can address that for going back into that treated area. Certified farmers, Farmer assistants or workers may need to enter the treated area early to do short-term tasks before the end of the REI. This is allowed if you follow these guidelines. And for this example, uh, zero to four hours, do not enter, no one enters. Four to 12 hours, there can be early entry by a certified farmer following these conditions. 12 to 24 hours early entry by workers. Again, there's some conditions for them to go into that area before the REI has passed. And finally, 24 hours plus uh, anyone can enter the REI has ended. Okay, so look that over. That's in your manual in chapter three. 
Spray drift buffer zones, areas left untreated to protect adjacent sensitive areas. Those are on the label. So that's the distance between the point of direct application of the pesticide and the closest downwind edge of an area sensitive to the pesticide. And so soil fumigation, it's the area around the perimeter of an application block. So if you're dealing with the soil fumigants, uh, please pay attention to that. I know there's extensive um, um, requirements and if you use those regularly, you will know those. Spray drift buffer zones, sensitive terrestrial habitats, and sensitive freshwater habitats is how that is stated on the label. So terrestrial, meaning land, so grasslands, windbreaks, woodlots, sensitive freshwaters, uh, marshes, wetlands, ponds, rivers. Example, Simazine 480 herbicide. Here is the field sprayer, is the method of application. It will be separated out by crop the buffer zones that you need and required, and then aquatic and terrestrial habitats. So note, if you are mixing more than one product, so you've got two products, you're making a tank mix. You observe the largest, most restricted buffer zone of the tank mix products. Always go with the most restricted of anything with a tank mix product. Vegetative filter strip, certain pesticides, require a vegetative filter strip, an area of permanent vegetation that is at least 10 meters wide maintained along the downhill slope beside aquatic habitats. So on the next page is an example. Um, there's a spray drift buffer zone on that label and also a vegetative filter strip requirement on the product label. There is an east wind at the time of application and so since this is a downward slope, right? so the wind is coming this way. The wind's coming this way. First, the spray drift buffer zone. It says leave a 15 meter spray drift buffer zone between aquatic habitats. Here it is, 15 meters. It also says leave a 10 meter vegetative filter strip. So that is down here on the downward, oh excuse me, downward slope of the um, of the area. You can note here, no vegetative filter strip is required as the runoff will flow downhill away from the this aquatic freshwater habitat at the higher level. Okay, look that over. Um, that's described in your manual. Managing pesticide resistance, chapter six. Well, resistance um, has uh, been a, a real um, problem over the years and herbicide resistance with Canada flea bane is a good example to show you recently here. So glyphosate resistant Canada flea bane um, is an uh, example of the one weed is now an Ontario wide problem with over 200,000 seeds produced per plant it spreads quickly. The resistant population was first confirmed in Essex County in 2010 and is now confirmed in 31 counties. In addition, many counties in Ontario have Canada flea bane biotype with multiple resistance, meaning that the biotype is resistant to both group 9 and group 2 herbicides. Glyphosate resistant water hemp. Again, a uh, picture of 2014 to 2019 period of time and the number of counties that we have glyphosate resistant water hemp. Health risks of pesticide use. Let's, oh, let's reflect quickly on that chapter. This equation, risk equals toxicity times exposure. Toxicity you're given a pesticide, it has a toxicity, a measure of how harmful or poisonous it is. Your exposure though, that's a measure of the contact you have with that pesticide and you can control your exposure. So keeping your exposure down will lower your risk. Protective clothing and personal protective equipment. Whoops, goodness, going too fast. Uh, just wanna highlight the air purifying respirators uh, particulate respirators, that's 
uh, a respirator that protects from dust and small particles, right? You see the 3M NIOSH respirators. And then the chemical cartridge respirator is a half or full face mask, protects from organic vapors. And then you have gas masks with a canister and used mostly for fumigants or areas where there's a high concentration of vapors. So there are approval numbers under NIOSH, which is the approval group out of the United States for respirators. They have TC numbers and you can see them there and they'll be in your book as well and uh, make sure you are using a respirator with a NIOSH approval number. There are particulate ratings as well and the 95, the 99 and the 100 there indicates the percentage of um, protection. Pesticide spills, chapter 16. Whoops, goodness, goes too fast there. Um, Pesticides Act and the Environmental Protection Act. Um, in there, uh, it states must report spills. There is the Spills Action Center available in Ontario now, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week, and also must report to your local municipality. Um, but if there is a spill, that's an um, uh, a quantity of a pollutant uh, out into the environment uh, that is abnormal. So you must report to the Spills Action Center. Clean up spills and also the owner person in control must compensate the parties that are damaged. Drift of Pesticides, Chapter 18, a few highlights here. Um, just. Uh, Make you aware that the spray nozzle classification by droplet size exists and is color coded. So we have categories of very fine, fine, medium, coarse, very coarse, extremely coarse, ultra coarse. So we can purchase um, nozzles in a particular, particular classification that will generate the larger sized nozzles and reduce drift. And we can see how the type of nozzle makes an effect. Uh, here's a, a lot of small droplets drifting away. We can see the result here. And over here we have a nozzle with um, drift reduction happening. And we can see that we've got a result that's much better. All right, coming to the end here, just picture yourself on a professional basis coming to your farm as a customer. What would you change, if anything, regarding your pesticide program in order to feel comfortable having a customer see your operation? It's always good to think about um, how we're using pesticides and how the public views uh, us farmers using pesticides and it's a question to think about when looking at your pesticide safety farming practices and how you can improve them and keep that in mind as you go through the course. Um, I hope you enjoy the course. We're, we welcome you to the course. If you have any questions you can phone or email us. I'm Susan Kellner but there's staff at our toll-free number 1-800-652-8573 and our email is rc OPEP, that's Ridgetown Campus of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program at University of Guelph, uoguelph.ca. Thanks.